to see you tonight, but I think that's what you're going to Down if we can. Um, okay, we are delighted to have you all here this evening. Uh, thanks for coming along. I hope you all got a chance to drop into uh, Wild uh, by Stay City across the road. Um, if you didn't, uh, I should say that after Jason's inspiring quick chat in a couple of moments, you will want to, and it will be open afterwards as well, so you can drop in there and they'll, 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 they'll welcome you there. Um, we're, as you know, the plan is that we're, we're trying to live stream this. Uh, I will say for the uh, live stream audience who are over there, hi guys, um, but we're, I, I think we, you should be getting audio, but we are not 100% sure and we will find out, but if you're not, then email uh, secretariat at bgtw.org and say, I'm not getting any audio. That's good so, for American Sign Language. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll, we'll do the American Sign Language. Um, we're we're going to double head this. Ian Murray is uh, a complete star. He's the executive director of the Society of Editors. Uh, hats off to him. He was, you know, our Guild uh, Awards dinner at the Savoy. Well, they do the same thing, only bigger. We're about 330, they're about 450. At the Hilton yesterday, uh, 500. Uh, black tie, full bit, uh, 34 awards for the national press, everything from best travel journalist to uh, best scoop of the year, and so on. And he, the fact that he's looking, you know, fresh and bushy eyed and, yeah, and the rest of it, I think is a tribute to, uh, to him. So thank you so much for, for being here. We're gonna double head this thing, uh, but in the meantime, we're going to ask Jason from Stay City to just tell us a little bit about what they're doing across the road. Yeah, what are we doing across the road? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll do yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jason Delaney. I'm the, uh, the brand and marketing director for Stay City, uh, the Stay City Group. Uh, just a bit of, first of all, to thank you for, for coming and going to enjoy the, the debate right here. And the live stream, and my pleasure on anyone in this room, that's the look to you. Um, but just to explain, yeah, we opened uh, literally across the world, we opened our first premium bonds. So I'll take you back to 14 years before then. Um, I don't know if anyone in this room is aware of the concept of apart hotels or service apartments. But basically, uh, if I explain it quite quickly, we see that you would have hotels on the left hand side, plus the Airbnb on the right hand side, and right down the middle, apart hotels and service apartments. So our CEO had the vision, his name is Tom Marsh. He, he rented out his apartment about 15 years ago on short stay lot. Um, during that time, at the end of the year, he had an occupancy of something like 90%, average room rates of something like 200 euros. It was, it was a true bed apartment in terms of that. And he thought to himself, my God, if I can achieve this in one apartment, what could I do with a multiple? So, Q, 14 years later, we currently operate 2,000 apartments and we've signed deals for another 4,000. So, our group is basically a group. We have two brands essentially today. Uh, the first is our bread and butter, it's our core brand. It's basically a part of We operate basically part of in 10, 10 cities. 
Um, and now we've just made our first statement with our premium brand, which is World Apart Hotels by Star City, uh, and it's influenced by Oscar Wilde. So as part of uh, the new premium brand, we're going to be opening our, our core brand, uh, just to explain, you probably picked up from my accent. Uh, we're Dublin based, um, we have a tropical climate where Dublin is, as you know, if you're a tropical because you've probably been there, we get sun all the time, and look at me. So <laughs> we're, we're basically, um, we're, our head office is in Dublin, we then have up, uh, properties up in Edinburgh, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, uh, York, uh, London, Marseille, Paris and Lyon. So I think I've done the full ten there. So for our premium brand, uh, our first statement is directly across the road at the Strand. And then we'll be opening up a world, uh, two properties in Berlin, one in Edinburgh and another one in Manchester. So it's busy times ahead and it's great that we've had the opportunity just to say a couple of words before you start your debate. Um, in the sense that hopefully as travel writers and the concept of a part of Tales or service departments is something that you might hopefully find of interest and uh, any support you can give to us would be greatly appreciated. So, uh, so that's it. So it's just to wish you well, have a, have a great debate and I'm going to be on duty for the rest of the evening I'm, as I'm Irish. I might get the bar here first, but if you don't see me there, I promise I'll be doing more tours later in the evening if you want to pop in, and I'll be more than happy to show you the facilities and whatnot. So that's all, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, I, I am, uh, I, you, know, you have to say this in a way, but actually I'm genuinely saying I am delighted that Stay City have uh, supported this event, because I do think that uh, part hotels are... Uh, of the moment in a way that perhaps they hadn't been in the past. It's something that we as, uh, as journalists and, uh, and, and influencers, bloggers, maybe haven't written about that much. But suddenly with the uh, appearance of Airbnb, um, that, that opportunity to stay uh, and stay for a long time and self-cater and particularly plug into the local community uh, is becoming really interesting. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of journalists will, uh, will, will pick up on that. Right, so let's get down to the, the, the business at hand. Um, we were going to start off with basically what we're thinking is we'll uh, ask the panel to uh, put their positions and where they think travel writing is going in the future. Um, you'll notice that the word ethical is in brackets because the reason for that is because what we're interested in and what I, the goal of, the, of this evening is for uh, the audience, you guys and those uh, out there, to come away with something kind of practical, in other words, some idea of what might be around the corner and how we as, uh, as, as uh, writers and broadcasters uh, can uh, do something with that. Uh, ethical is bound up in the middle of it. It's bound to be. So uh, it's, uh, we're, we're not really talking about what my idea of ethics is as opposed to your idea of ethics, but we are going to be talking about things like transparency and the like. So, you haven't really had a chance, have no. you? I mean, <laughs> do you want to introduce the microphone even on? No. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you like to introduce the panel and uh, we'll go through? I like the way that yes. <laughs> Is anything actually working? Yeah. So, there we go. There we go. That's a. Uh, that's a. Uh, that's uh, a. <laughs> <London. laughs> yes. Um, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, members of the panel. Thank you very much. Sounds like a very old BBC programme, doesn't it? Yeah. Members, the Bishop of Bath and Wells will now answer this question. Um, I'm delighted to actually be here, and thank you so much, Alice, for those glowing actual references. I do have uh, the, uh, the most dangerous job in the world once a year, and that's last night, where I um, uh, stage and host on behalf of the Society of Editors the National Press Awards. And as chairman of the judges, I have to basically try and keep peace between the warring tribes of what used to be known as Fleet Street. And uh, I'm sure you all know that last year's overall, uh, sorry, this last night and this year's overall winner of Newspaper of the Year was and is the Financial Times. So my life today is for some reason an awful lot easier than last year when the newspaper of the year was the Daily Mail. <laughs> and for some reason, why? Why does it get that reaction? Why does it get that reaction? For some reason, it kind of... Um, but as, as we sort of like point out and uh, compare um, Nick Ferrari from uh, London... Um, London LBC, thank you, LBC. Yeah, he's now leading Britain's conversation, isn't it? Because it's, it's everywhere. Uh, Nick Ferrari, who's done it for several years and is a great supporter of the Society of Editors, basically sat down next to me in between um, when he was coming off stage and said, oh boy, are you in the shit. <laughs> there are tables here that hate you. <laughs> and I said, well, what goes around comes around and every paper has a good year and whatever. And if you look at the list of those papers, every paper's won over the time. Seriously, our panel, all papers are basically, basically there. So, um, 
But why is the Society of Editors involved this evening and why is it, um, uh, we, we invite uh, two members, representatives of our papers to be, uh, members of our, our society to be uh, here is because um, quite naturally the natural assumption is Society of Editors, we fight for, for um, press freedom, we fight, fight for um, ethical standards, we fight for um, the public's right to know, we campaign for freedom of expression which I constantly have to say does not just mean news. It doesn't just mean the, the, the freedom, freedom of expression and the right to actually tell you what's going on in Parliament and what's going on in your local council chamber and ensure the courts are covered. It actually means freedom of expression for all forms of writing and media and that inform, includes travel. So basically um, when Alistair suggested um, that we actually think about doing something together uh, that struck a chord because I'm, and I hope you will go from here and think, yay, the Society of Editors is fighting for us as well to enable us to talk about these issues. So I, I'm delighted to be here, and I'm sure there's lots and lots of um, topics that we're going to talk about. I'm going to introduce our panel, basically down at the uh, starting again. Uh, Julia Buckley basically is the head of uh, travel. Are you the travel editor? Is that correct form? If, if you're talking to me, I'm Claire Irving. Claire Irving, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know I would do that? Why did I do that? I knew I'd go. Claire Irving <laughs> is the head of, head of travel for the Telegraph. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Introducing me for the first time, as you can tell. We're old friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Far more attractive than their photographs, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yes, Claire, head of travel for, uh, for the Telegraph. Uh, Julia Buckley is head of travel for the Evening Standard and the Independent. Sarah Lee is travel. <laughs> travel journalist, editor, author, blogger, photographer, speaker, you know it all. And Nick Redmayne has come the furthest today, I understand. All the way from Cumbria? Cumbria? No. no. Cumberland. Cumberland. No. Northumberland. Northumberland, ah. I knew it was an end. At the end of it all, but basically, so a photographer and broadcaster. Um, so, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, uh, so, uh, here's our panel, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I'm sure that there will be some pretty tricky questions eventually. But what we're going to do is start off by inviting the members of the panel, starting with yourself. <laughs> with Claire. Basically, to just give us an overview, short as it is, as how you see the future of travel writing going. Well, the, the future of, writing, of travel writing, as I see it, starts with the readers, stroke customers, because they are both. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Should I hold it? Yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it starts with the, with the readers. So we are seeing a more discerning reader, and that goes. Um, from what they're, they're looking for in terms of the content, but also the destinations that we're featuring. That means <coughs> it needs to uh, speak to them as an individual, as opposed to a group. It needs to be, they are discerning and they are demanding, so it needs to entertain, it needs to inform, and it needs to incite their curiosity. To do that, the person who's writing needs to be an expert. So in terms of engaging, it needs to catch their eye, speak to them on a level that goes beyond travel, so there needs to be a great story. And it also needs to speak to their need to know that us as experts are helping them make the best choices, not just for them and for what they want to get out of their travel, but for the environment, for the people that they're going to be meeting, for the, uh, uh, you know, and for the earth itself. So sustainability, um, the environment, and responsible travel and um, you know and issues around over tourism and so on are all really important so in short we as travel writers need to be the experts that do all those things and guide them to the best choices thank you very much Claire Julia on every platform oh, on every platform <laughs> um, this is really awkward because I made all these lovely ethical notes and now I've got to try and find something <laughs> ethical no, um, no ethical I, no it's fine I think the whole digital first <coughs> idea is the biggest change that we're seeing at the moment and that we are going to see. I think a lot of people write it off as 
I don't know, clickbait or not being very exciting. I actually think it's really exciting that you can see what people are reading and how far they're getting down in stories. And I think because there's so much competition now online from all kind of outlets, it's not just a few newspapers, we're under a lot more pressure. We can't be lazy anymore. You can't just go to a city <coughs> and do a generic city guide, as Claire was saying. It's all about expertise. Um, and I think it's kind of making us show our metal a bit more, which I think is really exciting. It's also giving us the opportunity to delve a lot deeper into certain places and subjects. So instead of saying, you know, in print, oh, we already covered that destination six months ago, so we can't do anything on it again, with online, you can expand in so many different directions. I think that's really exciting. And you can start telling really amazing stories about people whose stories haven't been told before because they might get that much in print, but online you can have a whole article about them. And I think that's probably the most exciting thing. Um, I would agree that the people reading stuff, they're kind of experts now, they're traveling themselves, so they won't let you get away with anything lazy. Um, and I think probably the responsibility for us, kind of from the editorial side, but also for travel writers, is kind of treading the line between going for what you think, what you know will do well, what people will click on, and actually producing a good story, because they're not always the same, and it's beautiful when they are the same. But I think, I think some people can be too cynical, and some people just don't want to talk about it at all, and it's quite important to meet in the middle. Excellent. Sarah. Sarah. Um, I actually agree an awful lot there with, um, with what Julie's saying, in as much as I do see a move towards digital first, um, not just, you know, from my position, of course, because <laughs> I am from a digital platform. Um, you know, that, that is what I do 90% of the time. Um, but also very much so from, um, you know, traditional media, print media and so on is heading that way. Um, and it's the, the expansion, you know, I think that's going to be the, the, the key thing here. Using those platforms, finding the platform that works for you and using those, those platforms to fully fit. Um, so it may be the, a social media platform, it may be a blog, it may be video that is your thing, but I think there is definitely going to be a um, move towards more online content. Um, and I do agree as well, it's a very interesting point between what people are going to click on and creating that content that, that gets you know, traffic to your, to your site or the channels or whatever it is, and also the stuff that's interesting. You know, and it can be a bit of a difficult line to tread, you know. But I think it's really, but the whole landscape's really just going to continue to evolve. Excellent. Nick? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm probably going to disappoint everybody here because if you've come here looking for answers, you know, I do not have them. Um, not only that, I don't even know what were the right questions to ask here. Um, there are unknown, unknown, unknowns to coin the poetry of Donald Rumsfeld. Um, and I probably could come from this from a slightly different perspective. I'm, you know, I'm not an editor. I'm a sort of, um, you know, a, 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 a job in travel writer. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching and I'm trying to make a living out of this. Uh, and, and the question I would say that's most prescient in my mind, it, 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 you know, is where, you know, where is travel writing going? Where is ethical travel writing going? Is, is there going to be a job for me? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> And I won't bore everybody senseless with this, but I, you know, uh, I have come to travel journalism via um, a series of um, unexpected steps. You know, I, I, I travelled, uh, my soul travelled. I worked for Trail Finders in Earl's Court when there was just a, a Earl's Court road, and uh, Mike Gooley had his washing machines and his sofa made <laughs> down the stairs. So that's not the public case. Um, uh, uh, and I've sold the idea of travel. Um, I worked in PR reasonably um, <coughs> successfully um, until about 2007, 8, I'm not sure. um, and now I write. I write travel, uh, and I possibly might be moving on to try and teach uh, travel and tourism as well. Um, my first journalistic job was in cartoon, uh, sub-editing for uh, a national. Well, suddenly it's new news agencies uh, newsletter, and they paid me in beans, literally. and some literally in beans, uh, full madame, uh, full father beans, brown beans. And I suppose I, you know, sometimes I think, 
am I moving in circles? <laughs> uh, where, where is ethical travel journalism going? I, uh, I don't know. I certainly don't see it as uh, defined by um, the medium. Uh, there is absolutely no reason why print should be seen as uh, more as ethical uh, and that something that's online or that uh, a blog is uh, necessarily um, you know, unethical. Um, it's all about in, uh, editorial in, in, integrity. Um, I agree that uh, travellers these days are generally uh, more savvy than they ever used to be. Uh, they have more access more immediately to more information than uh, probably other, any, any other generation of uh, travellers um, before. Um, where does that lead us? Well, I don't know. Let's see where the discussion goes. The truth is that um, Nick, he may say he doesn't have the answers, but he certainly, I'm moving away from the speaker. An answer. <laughs> an answer. But he certainly knows how to pose the questions because he wrote uh, recently on uh, his own blog. He said, it's clear that newspapers and magazines are either unable, unwilling, or uninterested in paying better rates. In which case, why not allow a tourist board or a sponsor to pay a journalist directly? The same editorial rigor could be maintained, not something that applies to many blogs, and the writer's fee might actually add up to more than the cost of a Happy Meal. And I think what you were saying there was that you thought that there could be some, in the, in the sense we're chopping out the middleman. So at the moment, the model we've all been working on all these years has been a publisher of a newspaper or a magazine or whatever will do deals with a destination, let's say, but it could be that they actually fund you directly while yeah. the editor of the magazine still ed maintains the ethics. Yeah, I mean, if you want to head off down this one, I mean, it, I was prompted to, to, to write that. Um, I found myself on a, um, a, a press trip. Okay, I can't actually remember where it was, but anyway, I was sitting, sitting around having a coffee with um, uh, a travel blogger. And we were discussing, well, I was crying into my copy about um, the perpetual um, struggle to make to make sense out, out of the profession. And um, this particular person started to wax lyrical about Orlando as uh, uh, a travel destination and how it's a wonderful place to go for uh, uh, families. And if you're thinking uh, th this is looking at an aspect of Orlando that you know, perhaps you know, doesn't involve the, you know, the, the commercial structures which are you know, completely unavoidable, no. This was focusing on those on, on those structures. It was um, uh, not a fresh look; it was an old look. And I said, "Well, yeah, yeah, I can see how it might work, uh, but frankly, you know, you would have to pay me." And she said, "Oh, they did pay me. <laughs> <laughs> they paid me my daily rate and funded the trip and the rest of it. At which point, they paid for the coffee." <laughs> <laughs> Yes, go, go for it, Claire. Well, I, I'm slightly troubled by the phrase doing deals with destinations because I, I, I'm not sure what the, the, the perception around that is. Um, you said uh, that the, the people think that newspapers will do deals with destinations. Well, um, the deal that we do is, um, is quite often, if you are in a different department to me uh, with a destination, if they're talking about advertising or, or branded content, um, our deal is with the writer and they will um, come to us with an idea or we'll go to them with an idea and we will sometimes send them. Very often we will use destination, our destination experts who are in situ <coughs> so that A, we don't have to um, ask them to spend an awful lot of time travelling to and from um, in order to maximise their fee. We also get the expertise of the context so that they, they live there, they know it, they know um, the... Um, the people and, and, and the destination. Um, <clears throat> but also, you know, if we, um, we then provide the trust factor for the readers because we are not part of, we're not, it, it, the destination is not paying the writer, so there is not an assumed bias towards doing them a good deal because they've done them a good deal. We're in the middle to provide. Um, you know the, the the editorial integrity. We will make sure that the commission that we have um, we've set has been met, and that we've got that quality content. That it delivers on a storytelling level, um, on a tone level. That it's got all the expertise that you require, and the con the local context, and that we can then not only provide our readers with the the information about 
that one particular element, but that you know that we can make it sure it's all correct, and then they can make their own choices accordingly. Um, so hopefully, manage to yeah. cover off both those. <coughs> I, I didn't. Um, I, I wasn't when I was saying uh, doing doing deals. Perhaps it wasn't quite the. Uh, the, 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 the way I, I intended. Um, I was speaking really of that, that, that classic model. So as a travel editor, uh, my job was to protect the output uh, and to fight off the evil machinations of the sales team who were always trying to force some kind of new campaign or something uh, on the, on the programme. Um, and in the same way, that, 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 set, that model still exists throughout the, uh, the, the traditional media Industry. So, in other words, when, when somebody comes along to you, uh, let's say a, a destination, Cyprus off the top of my head, um, and, uh, and, and comes to your sales team and your publisher and says, we, we're, we're really keen to promote our centenary of something or other, um, and we'd like to, you know, we'd love to run a, maybe a supplement with you guys or whatever, they'll come to you to say, okay, we're going to need some writers to do work on this supplement. I, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, Julia, is that, that I'm not. I'm, uh, that's what happens in, in radio, it's what happens in most traditional media. That, and your job then is to go, okay, well, we need to, that, that, that's, we've got people who do that, but we need to uh, make sure that it, it, it works for the, for the audience. Yeah, we actually have totally separate commercial and editorial teams. I don't know if that makes us quite unusual, okay. but yeah, so I don't have anything to do with the, the sponsors. So the people, so the people who would write for a, for a supplement in this case, wouldn't wouldn't be travel writers at all. They would they be would travel writers, but they're not commissioned by me, so I don't. I sometimes, if they say, well, do you I have an expert on whatever? People have asked. Oh yeah, I recommended you something, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we are um, incredibly successful. You know, we're now the um, tenth biggest travel website in the world. That's not just editorial; that's any travel website. And so um, my 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 vision was that we really enhance the editorial that we do. That's put us in that position. And and so in doing so, we've we've definitely um, made the gap much wider between. I mean, click quite clearly, their colleagues. We still work together. I don't ignore them in the corridor. Um, <laughs> But you know we've turned down really big deals <coughs> this year because I didn't ethically didn't feel it was right for us to be covering them editorially. So whether or not that carrot that they go ahead with those commercial deals, we will not be contributing to them editorially. Can I can I, I just pick up on that when you, you you said that ethically you don't need to tell us which deals because I was at which I was won't. <laughs> no, no, I didn't you would for a moment. But but what kind of then general, what were the kind of ethical reasons that you would turn something down? Um, if we can't cover them editorially because we don't agree with perhaps the um, ethos of the governing state or the human rights record, um, well, those are the two examples I've got. It's not harsh enough. <laughs> so, so if I come along and say, I've got this great idea about a, something to do with Moscow at the moment. <laughs> I'm not talking and commenting on specific examples. You're not commenting on specific but, but yes, so it would be, yes, things like that that you might But, you know, we, we did, I mean, talking of Moscow, we, uh, that's a case in point of us as experts um, making decisions for our readers. So it, we're led by, we will cover, thank you, it's, Tinny, isn't it? Um, you know, we we won't in run of book cover destinations that um, the FOC is 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 saying is dodgy to go to because the readers won't be able to get insurance, and as experts, we can't ethically advise them to go there. Every now and again, there will be um, an uh, an exception to the rule, so. Last week, or two weeks ago, for example, we ran a story on Kate Humble in the Democratic of Congo. He went to see gorillas. She did that off her own back. It was a brilliant story. It was in no way... She came to us after she'd been, and so we commissioned her. Um, and we just thought, you know what? Actually, there is a tour running there, and people want to know what she's been up to. And we made it really clear that we couldn't advise people to do that, that, you know what, the tour sold out on the same day because I asked out of interest <laughs> as a litmus test of, of um, how crazy our readers are.
Crazy for gorillas, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting one, though. Okay, it's, humble, yeah. Sorry, just just a quickie. I mean, the 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 um, wider world winner of the British Guild of Travel Writers um, award uh, the year before last was the Sinai Trail, which was um, it's been headlined as um, Egypt's first um, uh, long long distance walking route from the um, Gulf of Aqaba. Uh, to um, Jebel Ka Katerina, it's about 200, 200 220 kilometres. Um, currently, all of Sinai, apart from uh, Sharm el Sheikh itself, it is on a Foreign Office um, uh, advisory in terms of the, don't travel. Um, so they cite security reasons. Um, you know, it's up to everybody to make their own investigations and inform their own judgment. As we say, travellers are becoming more savvy uh, these days. So, can we not sometimes at least start? You know, I don't know whether the legalities are that hard. Anyway, this was a, I did this trip. It was a very worthy project. It's exactly the kind of thing that um, um, we should at least be saying exists, and then people can make their own decisions whether they want to um, uh, do them or not. Um, it's a great project. It's grown. It's mushroomed as part. Of, I mean, the British Guild of Travel Writers saw fit to give it. Um, uh, you know, global publicity. Um, uh, it, you know, if we, if we as a, a guild can do that, then uh, you know, sh should not other uh, members of the um, media be, be supporting those kinds of uh, decisions and uh, at least allow, uh, allowing um, uh, individuals the, 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 the chance to make up their own minds. I well, think they should. Very clear, though, as you indeed were with the Congo. Yeah, and I think it comes down to the reader, knowing your readership. I mean, you know, I we. We debated that at length about whether we should run it and decided that actually, as was proven, it's right for our readers. Whereas, uh, and so I'm not going to say we're not going to do any other um, dangerous destinations, but at the same time, we're not just going to do it willyest nillyest. We, you know, we've got to um, know what our readers would that, It's that instinct that um, being travel experts allows you to have and use um, with discretion. Is there, is there not a risk, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, that your readers trust you so much that you said, this minefield, what an interesting, it's worth, it's worth picking your way through, etc. And they think, well, I'm going to trust Claire because she, uh, you know, uh, da, 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 and in fact, you're inviting them to go into a dangerous we war zone. We made it really clear that we weren't saying it was safe. We were saying this tour exists, and Kate talked about the dangers around it. And we were very, very clear, and we, and we highlighted it in a box, that it was very clear that they would not get insurance, and that um, and that we as travel experts weren't saying, go there, we were saying, this opportunity exists, but it's not covered for these reasons. So, And then you leave that down to the reader's discretion. And that's why I'm not going to do it every single week, because then that would be leading them down a dangerous path, I think. Can I ask, um, Sarah, w would you uh, run a piece on um, going to the Sinai or anywhere, or is it entirely driven by um, being a, a business? Because um, uh, there is the business aspect to it, of course, for us. Um, but actually, we wouldn't work with certain destinations. You know, it's plain and simple. We just wouldn't, bec because if, like, like we say, if people can't get insurance to visit those those destinations, then it just doesn't make sense, you know, to be um, writing about them and, and offering them up as a place that someone can visit. Just the, uh, the, the key words in all of this are your audience. In other words, you know, we wouldn't, we, we, we wouldn't write about this because for our audience it, it wouldn't be right. In the same way that you as a publisher, mm -hmm. and I should say that Sarah and uh, her husband Terry, who run Live Share Travel, um, are uh, one of the sort of the, the leading uh, UK um, travel blog sites. You now are commissioning other writers as well, so you are indeed publishers, but it is very, very business driven. Um, so the, the lead element might well be that you're working with a particular destination, but the key thing in there, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, is uh, your audience, because you wouldn't you wouldn't go into a deal with, um, let's say, the, the Sinai, um, if it was felt wrong for your audience. 
No, absolutely. I, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say I wouldn't do anything with the sign eye because it might be it might be really great. It you is. know, but it has to fit with the audience exactly. You know, um, but equally, even you know, there are parts of Egypt which are perfectly great, a great fit with our audience and so on. But there are ethical questions to be asked about. Would we, you know, is it right to promote this? Is it right to talk about this? To push it out there and to um, encourage people to to visit that place. You know, and um, just last week, in fact, we had a story on Orlando and um, a certain theme park there. We um, it was written by another one, by one of our team actually, and um, they mentioned a certain theme park there. And I thought, no, we've got to take that out because there are ethical issues regarding that theme park. You know, so um, now <laughs> the confused <laughs> looks around the room. Yes, that's it exactly. Think about fish. Oh, yeah. Very, very big fish, yeah. Um, and then mammals. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the film I'm thinking of, Blackfish. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and um, did that clash with, with, with uh, that particular piece? Was that part of a, a campaign? No, it okay. wasn't. So, not so everything on do. our site is. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, equally, whether it was a campaign, you know, something that we did as part of the campaign, or whether it was something that we did as general editorial, like there is other editorial on our site, you know. We wouldn't. We would equally, you know, not mention it. We wouldn't be, because it wouldn't be appropriate. Can, can you describe uh, how? Sorry, uh, um, I monopolize it. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that this light went slightly yeah, red. I put my, 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 my bit in while I got the battery. Um, uh, you, can you describe the, 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 the process when it comes to um, working on a campaign? Because what you effectively are doing is signing up for a, a series of deliverables. So it will yeah. be X amount of I mean, tweets or something or uh, 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 videos or 360s or... Never, never go that detailed <laughs> um, because it just doesn't make sense. Because actually for a very good reason again, um, in terms of, thank you, in terms of the um, number of uh, social media shares or whatever it may be, it wouldn't be appropriate to say, yes, we will do a, um, so many, because sometimes you haven't got the right content, you haven't got quality content. Um, so, you know, you all, it could even the be that the weather's against you. Yeah. 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 Even that, you know, that the weather isn't right on the day or something like that, so it's difficult to judge whether that's going to work. Um, but there are a minimum number of deliverables, maybe it would be, um, you know, two stories on our site and um, a video or um, just, or, you know, and, and certain amount of, you know, a mini of, and, and social media to go with it. Um, and then in that, there is a very clear line on editorial control, one. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, how you deal, for example, with negative experiences. Yeah. If there's negative experiences, like we go back to who, the person we're working with immediately and just say, this was the problem and we won't be writing about it, you know, or we will have to deal with it in a certain way. Um, you know, don't expect us to cover that. We won't. Just won't. And what do you say uh, <laughs> in terms of transparency? Because. Um, Claire and Julia will, uh, will will always, actually they are quite good at it, there are other newspapers that aren't maybe so good, <laughs> um, but they will always say uh, Nick Redmayne was a guest of the Bedouin in the Sinai or the, um, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the Cyprus tourism organisation. Um, what are you doing in terms of transparency, both on, on, on the blog, on those deliverables, on video, on social media? Um, we always have a um, disclosure statement within the, the piece, you know, that it was part of, you know, a project that we did with whichever client it may be, you know, um, and yeah, but we have that on, on the blog, we have that hopefully on our YouTube as well, we should be, <laughs> um, and, um, and also use like required hashtags on um, tweets and things like that as well, yeah. 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 Because. Where I'm just giving up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, uh, where I'm going with this is, um, I, I, I'm gonna, I want to ask both Claire and Julia, uh, and, and to an extent Nick, you know, where, where when they're thinking about the future, what you're concentrating on is your your world, your you know, the, the, the Telegraph Group or, or whatever it might be, and where you might go within that on numerous platforms or whatever. But do, but, but do you ever think about where the competition lies? Um, and do you see, for example, what Sarah's doing as uh, competition or part of the natural 
gene pool um, because there's no reason why Sarah's you know, and Terry are two people. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to separate the role of publisher from editor uh, in one person. You know, they don't have to be Woodward and Bernstein uh, um, exclusively. They can be Woodward and Bernstein and Rupert Murdoch. So the question, sorry, the question is: Do, do, do you guys think about where, you know, where travel will be going and where, who will be writing it, and, uh, and, and um, what the competition might be? I like to try and lead the way in that without wanting to sound in any way arrogant. Um, of course, we look to our um, com our competitors and our peers for great ideas, and you know, I'll kick myself if somebody's sent somebody brilliant and done a really great feature. And you know, Julia, that's often in your um, across your platforms. But in all seriousness, you know, w what we cannot be as the Telegraph. Um, despite the size and our current success is complacent. And so I think we have been complacent in the past and that's something that I won't allow the team to do. So we are constantly, and it may sound cliche, but it's true, and you all speak to all my team all the time and they will tell you this, we are constantly thinking about how we can make the best better. And that's in the way that we do things, in what we do, in where we're going, in, in who we're talking to, because that's growing as well. And as long as we are making all those things as innovative and um, exciting and engaging as possible, then that's our, our competition is ourselves. Also, um, very recently, The Telegraph has changed from um, chasing hits and clicks to um, reader engagement. So we are focusing very much on registrations and knowing who our readers are so that we can really understand what they want. We're not just relying on instinct, although obviously all of us journalists scoff at that because we've got this far on instinct. But you know, it's interesting to see what they really go for. Um, we're currently, travel isn't behind that registration wall. It's something that I've fought really hard for all year. We started a test yesterday, and Kel surprise, we are already completely wiping the floor. And I mean the rest of the Telegraph with that, because there are competitors too, internally. Um, and I'm not in the slightest bit competitive, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, could I just ask a question? Um, Let's, we're we're going to do a, a, a break in a minute or two, and then we're going to basically open it up. But yes, you can answer a question, because, uh, 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 because I would like to and that's what it's all about. It's about um, uh, my name's Sue Watt, I write for uh, uh, both, both of you actually, and um, I'm just wondering about the celebrity culture here. I'm an Africa specialist, and I do write, or I try to pitch <coughs> countries that sometimes are a little bit out of the ordinary, um, and I just wonder if the DRC article that you were talking about with Kate Humble, whether that would have been published if it wasn't Kate Humble. Um, mm, I, I just feel sometimes that uh, when there are maybe specialists who could come in and give a different perspective, that that isn't always um, allowed to give a voice. Do you mind if I answer that directly? Yeah, go for it, because we don't do some of that stuff. Okay, yeah, well we, um, yeah, we don't do, do celeb stuff either. We have um, a very strict, um, application of common sense which is is this person a good writer does this person know about travel do our readers think this person is a good writer and do our readers think this person knows about travel because um and perhaps in the past we have sent various celebrities to um a uh, on a package holiday maybe for the sake of having that person there but i would hope that that is no longer the case and if you've got examples, happy to talk about it. But we have a pool of celebrities. Um, recently, Julie Walters, Michael Portillo, Kate Humble, who our readers absolutely love. They trust, they think they are an authentic voice. We will send them somewhere to write about something within their um, circle of expertise. And <coughs> we treat them as an expert, just one with extra reach. So. No, I don't think we would send 
I, yes, I perhaps, perhaps we would have sent somebody, uh, um, published that feature written by somebody else. But the fact it was Kate, and she does have that resonance with our readers, gave it an extra dimension of trust and of a reason for us to, to, to put that out there. So um, generally, we will not run a story just by a... So in fact, I've turned down three this week. Somebody saying, I've got so-and-so going to a really great um, spa hotel. This is like, no, <laughs> not interested. Um, you know, and, and, and that was a brilliant feature. She's a great writer and she does exciting stuff and she really knows her stuff. So that's why that got published. Sarah, would you um, commission Kate Humble to, to write a piece if it fitted with, the, with, a, with a, a particular <coughs> campaign or? Not sure I can afford her. I'm sure she got paid just the same rate as anybody else. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking oh, partly sure. because um, uh, Sarah uh, wouldn't say because she's you know, too um, proper and shy and discreet, but um, when Sarah and Terry write about, for example, Sarawak, um, the result is, uh, or that whole island of Borneo, uh, that uh, Air Brunei have to put on an extra flight mm -hmm. as a result of that. <laughs> when Sarah and Terry write about um, meteor, meet and greet or whatever it was called, yeah. um, they, what the statistics, Terry, you tell me, the, 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 the Daily Mail had a campaign with them and, and sent them how many, in the first year they advertised with, about, with five, uh, about the last item with four or five other regional local, local newspapers, the Daily Mail was one of them, biggest uh, readership in the country, mm -hmm. uh, and, and in the first year, the Daily Mail sent them 10, whereas our side this year, Travel sent them 701, and all the others put together combined came on 70. So we sent like, 10 times <laughs> as much as anybody else. So I, I wanted to make that point because I wanted to make the point that this is grown-up stuff. We're not talking about, you know, it's Absolutely. the telegraph, it's the mail, it's the, all the rest of it. But it's, it's, it's still, it's still you're working yeah. the same kind of grown-up by but, yourself. But also the other important point I think about, um, I hate saying the word influencers, but bloggers or whatever you want to call them, I'm not that, not too precious about the title. Um, but the other thing about that is that it's their personalities that people hook into. So as much as they hook into Kate Humble, you know, people also want to know what, um, oddly enough, what we're doing um, and what a number of other um, of the bloggers that um, that I know, you know, in travel are doing as well. You know, it's personality driven in the same way, but um, it's not the same celebrity, let's say, you know, yeah, it's a different kind of thing. I think journalism as a whole is personality driven. I mean, yeah. people look for their favourite writers they within uh, um, a newspaper, whether it's a paper copy or you're looking at it on, online. So I think perhaps personal integrity is sometimes um, paramount. Um, and people yeah. trust, you know, a particular voice. Um, Okay, within the context of whatever medium it, it, it is, whatever publication it, 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 it is, but uh, um, yeah, people like trust, and I think trust is an, is, is an issue um, at the moment when we're, you know, we're all consumed by, or we were consumed recently by, by fake news. People want to trust what they're reading, uh, wherever that is, uh, and that, that's something that um, we've, got to, we've got to try and maintain. Okay, I'm going to take two questions from the audience, as they say, um, and in this particular case we're going for Mary Ball Mason. Um, hi there. Hello. Um, I was the previous chairman of the British Guild of Travel Writers, and 24 years ago I launched the travel magazine, which still exists, which is called Essentially America. It goes out, one, two of its issues a year go out with the Daily Telegraph. Now I have two questions, two concerns. One is we pay our writers, but some of my writers write for other publications that are quite reputable ones that do not pay them. I'd like to know what the panel thinks about this. There's also the fact that I have a great deal of respect for the new bloggers out there, but there is something that concerns me. If I go off on a press trip, and usually I go off on my own, uh, but if I go off on a group press trip, the blogger may be paid 250 pounds a day to be on that press trip, whereas the print journalists are just going off as the guests of the people. And this worries me a little bit. 
Now, I understand that they have been explained to me that unlike me, where I have a publisher and I have an advertising man that support my publication, they are in effect publishing people and advertising people, so therefore they have to cover their costs in some way. But I think it's a really interesting ethical question, so how do we deal with this? Can I just comment on the, my conversation with um, uh, the Orlando blogger? Um, that, uh, after I spat my coffee out, um, <laughs> this revelation um, of a, a, a payment of a daily rate for a trip to Orlando, um, it transpired um, and the term that was used was transactional. Um, in their heart of hearts, th you know, this was not uh, a, uh, a destination or an aspect of a destination that they had any um, look for. They didn't rate it at all, but it was um, it was transactional. It was a uh, it was business. So that is something that. Um, kind of find pro problematic. Um, okay, yeah. Can anybody hear me? I think this is dying, so I'll project. As, uh, said. I'm Roger McDonald. I'm the founder editor of three of the BBC's longest running travel programs, uh, the travel show, Breakaway Going Crazy, and I still work for the BBC. I'd like, really, if I may, to raise the elephant in the room that doesn't Please seem do. to be raised. Essentially, um, we have, uh, how can I put this, a, a natural dilemma between the realities of getting people to places and the independence and reliability of what is produced, in my case, in broadcasting terms, I think it applies in ethical terms to travel writing as a whole. Um, you have essentially the cost of people going. Now, most travel writers do not pay for their trips, clearly, in any way whatsoever. Their, cho their choice of travel writers to go on a particular trip is very often in the hands of somebody in public relations. In the old days, public relations kind of floated along in a vacuum where there was no real cost involved. In other words, an empty airline seat was never regarded by an accountant as something costly. Uh, an empty hotel room, similarly, and everything else. So the realities of the cost of that trip were never really focused on by either side. Nowadays, it seems to me there is an increasing concentration and pressure on both the public relations element, on, on the hotel brand, on an airline, to actually decide this is an, a quantifiable cost. And all these ingredients of the travel trip actually expect to get something positive in return. And really my question is, how do we actually manage fit those considerations in when we're being confident that what is coming back at the end is still ethical and something we can rely on. Who'd like to take that? Well, I'll talk, I'll talk about it briefly. I mean, I've, I've um, contributed uh, a number of things to BBC Radio, a number of uh, from our own correspondent uh, scripts. Um, in fact, several of those were from trips that I self-funded. Um, that no, um, no PR, no tour operator, tour operator would either existed or would touch with a with, with a barge pole. Uh, and certainly to places where where no UK-based tour operator could, um, you know, make any make sort of, sort of com commercial trip. So I have no problem with that. On the other hand, I have contribute contributed. Um, Stories which have been researched while doing something else. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a it's a, it's a complete conundrum, and it's um and it is the elephant in the room. But it's um how do we deal with it? I mean, you know, rates uh, uh, gone down and, and, and down. Um, um, demands made by by PRs um, gone up and up. 
Um, but but doesn't, where are we going with this? Aren't we all here because we don't necessarily, um, uh, you know, give those puffs that the PRs are looking for? I mean, well, you know, yeah. Nick, if I was to commission you to go uh, somewhere, and we 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 don't tend to send people on group trips, um, thus making you know the commission that much more complicated. But um, if we pick, so we pick the writer, so they will be somebody respected that we trust and that the venue trusts, and won't ne and will know that they won't necessarily, um, as I, you know, I'm sure with in in your case, aren't going to get a great review per se. It, you know, it, um, so so already you're setting up. Um, those parameters of expertise and um, integrity, um, you know, at, at, at we could just we just could not produce the amount of content that we do if we had to pay for it. But instead, we, we you know we we curate and we edit. So we send people we trust to do a job that we trust. And if they don't, if they can't say, if it, all they can say are really bad stuff, we will either frame that in a way that helps the consumer. Um, or, or we just we just don't publish it, and we will pay the writer. And we, you know, uh, I think you've got to um, you've got to approach this as an editor. You know, what, um, but but also we have destination experts, as I've mentioned before. We've got over three hundred of them around the world, so that enables us to, with reviews, before we even commission something, look at what the type of hotel or stay is and whether our readers are likely to be interested in that and and then send the writer and the writers that we choose I think quite often will have an intellectual bias towards not overmarking it because it's free in fact they will do the opposite because they want to find something wrong they want to be seen as selective and expert and and, and able to Really write something that matters and that will help our um, our readers choose. You know, and and you know, I know that when that that the destinations and venues and PRs will will all be sitting there thinking, what did Fiona Duncan score our hotel? Because they know quite, you know, she could quite easily give it a five, and then you know that's the death knell for them that season or the next four years, depending on how quickly we get to update the review. But you know, it's um, I think. I, and I think actually you could turn freebies because let's face it, that's only a phrase that a non-travel writer would use. You can use that. We can use that to our advantage because freebies are taken up by. And I come from a magazine background, so I can talk very happily about non-travel um, magazines and how they approach travel. You will get those um, writers going on a freebie. So they've got a free holiday and they're going to have a really lovely time and then they're going to write something fabulous and jolly for their readers that's going to give them an insight. And yeah, of course it will. It's giving them an insight. It's a really, it's a sunny page, it's a lovely picture and it's something that there is. And it's a, a, an invitation to dream for the readers. So I'm not knocking it, but I think what it does do it, it, it is a service to us because it, it highlights the expertise and the knowledge that goes into more considered opinions, shall we say. Can I um, just be, oh, sorry, sorry, please. Oh, no, I just wanted to check that. You do pay your writers, though, we don't do you? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, in yeah. answer to your first question, <laughs> which I was telling you, I do pay. Great, the Telegraph pay, pay, pay good fees, certainly. I mean, the bottom line is it's still not enough. <laughs> but it's still not enough to make well, a living. I'm not, I'm not directing it no, 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 no. but it's in general terms. You know, um, you just, uh, the industry rates are sim simply not enough. There's and in fact, nothing, I will nothing, just say, you know, but we've introduced, as many of you will have seen, lots of new formats and ways of, um, uh, and experience-led stuff, as well as destination-led features, which enables, we didn't actually set out with this intention, we just wanted it to be brilliant uh, copy, but actually what it means is if we are sending writers on a longer commission whereby they're going to be away from home, um, unable to work on other pieces, they can get more than one piece out. And we're, we're about to embark... I think every professional um, writer tries to stack a few pieces on them. Yeah. Nobody goes away doing one commission. I mean, we'd all be, I mean, I would be, a, you know, be really thin. <laughs> but equally, we're about to, um, and excuse the pun, but we're about to embark on a huge um, piece around crews. And we, we are actually, I'm in a lot of trouble at the moment because we haven't started it yet because I want the right person in place to be able to 
create a, a, a really complex commissioning plan that means we can have writers sort of chip hopping so they're not actually having to go and come back and go and come back all the time that they can get as much out of their time reviewing and then moving on somewhere else so it works for everyone. I mean, we're not a charity. We are a business, you know, and our rates aren't as high as I'd like them to be. You're absolutely right. But mm. we try to maximise the value for all of us. And, and the reader as well benefits from that. Mm. Yeah. I suppose it's got, to, it's got to the point with, with most, most freelancers that, um, you know, it simply is not a, not a job that you can do. If you're relying on, on uh, what you can glean from freelance rates, no matter how effective you, you've been in terms of stack, stacking commissions, it's simply not enough to provide a primary source of income. You have to have something else. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm exploring those, those uh, avenues uh, now. Can I just, just pick up, um, Claire, you were, you were saying and you're t you, you know your readers and you target your readers and, and you, you know what's good for them and you welcome the, the, the more fluffy stuff that appears in magazines. Not that I want to decry anything if anyone produces stuff for magazines. I enjoy the yeah, aspirational, oh, that looks yeah. nice, etc. cetera. Um, um, and I, but I just wondered, with, Julia, with your, your Evening Standard head on rather than the independent of that, the Evening Standard is, is ge a geographical. Mm -hmm. The readers come from all aspects of life. Do you have a less kind of like um, uh, a picky approach to it in that way, or more of, more of well, it's got to be more generic. In what we're covering, you mean in Destination? Yes, yes. Well, I don't know whether you saw on Monday the relaunch. Of yes, the I did. Episode. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. Not sure about the emojis with the poo, but there you go. That's, that's not my picture. <laughs> <laughs> my face is amazing. Um, no, I think, no, I think, especially with the redesign, we're going, we're going a lot more for less generic stuff actually and we're going for a lot more targeted things so the first piece we did that i wrote actually was about one place in johannesburg that's up and coming on friday we've got a piece about which i probably shouldn't shouldn't say but <laughs> bologna from a certain angle and i think that's what people want to read no one wants to read a generic thing and it has been that in the past and it has been a lot of press trips and a lot of group trips that staff people have been on and I don't think that's really serving anyone other than the person getting free holiday so that's something that I've been really keen to strip back if not out um, Oh you must be very popular in the newsroom Yeah I'm, I'm really The woman who took away the freebies <laughs> um, But I would say going back to the question over there that what's really important for me is expertise like I would never commission someone who wasn't an expert on a place, probably like 75-80% of the stuff that I commission is written by people based in a place, yeah. so either I know they're experts and they don't have to be taking freebies, and I know from a writer's aspect, because I was freelance for the best part of seven years before coming here, that I would only really be pitching places that I was expert on, and I would know, I did take freebies, of course I did, because you have to, you can't survive, but... I would make sure that I was approaching the people that I knew would be right for that article. So there is trust, um, and I think the best way to break through that with when you're writing for someone for the first time is to do something about somewhere that you know really well, or that you live, so you don't have to say, oh, I just want to have a free hotel, please, can someone sort me out, because you do need that trust, because otherwise it shows through in the writing as well, it's always going to show up. Okay. Um, there's a guy standing outside w with lots of wine and stuff, and he's he's muttering to himself because we're about half an hour behind uh, behind schedule. So we're going to take a, a quick break. When we come back, we've got a couple of questions that have simply disappeared off my screen now from Emma Thompson, wasn't it? That uh, who's watching over there? Hi, Emma. Um, and we'll uh, we'll put those. She wants to know about rates and what we think acceptable rates are. So uh, we'll tackle that when we get let's back. Nick. Let's uh, let's try and be back in here in about fifty. Sorry, in about ten minutes if we can.
So if I've never, I mean, I wouldn't take that from anyone. But yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think that's the best. Yeah, sure. It's just Julian Duck Buckley at Independent Duck Buckley UK. I don't have any clothes. Like Independent Duck Buckley UK. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, I want to have a Yeah, sure. 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 Yeah,
Yeah, it's just dro like plummeted in Amazon ratings over the last couple of days. I'm a bit fan of that. Yeah, I did a lot of, I did the newspapers, but everything has been in the newspapers come from me, but I don't have anything to my disease, so I kind of just let the PR do it. They did an amazing, they did a spread on. Oh, right. Yes. She's at Bratzel, wasn't she? They gave me a page. Um, the Telegraph did a spread, which was incredible. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's, it's been a really traumatic time for Bratzel. I'm actually just going to ask you that. When your story's like dull, you want to well, I was thinking about when they were talking about because I hear things about oh, I want to just say my piece as well. I'd rather just be asked like, what do you think? But when you're talking about things like the Sinai stuff, like if you talk about what I was doing in the book, I wouldn't. And every time yeah. I've done an interview about it, I've had to say, please don't go in. Not a chicken, it's made it's blood, like, please don't get exercise by duty free. So, yeah, it's the same thing as a thing. I think, and what I would have said, it's not like a good brother to speak out. Sorry, I think that each other has different features that you want to read and that are telling you the story of the place. I don't think it has to be replicable in a fact that you can put the fact that the other points I didn't have the, have the point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah you do. But uh, the, the point about insurance, I think that was um, incorrect. Uh, individuals can get insurance to go to these places. The problem is, tour operators can't. Um, well, that's that's yeah. well, that, that's okay. You can you just follow the travel advice chain. But um, Sinai, you can get insurance to go to Sinai. Uh, but what you can't, what you can't, you can't run a commercial tour there. A UK tour operator can't yeah. well, because they can't get the public liability. I think the point they were making was that you're yeah. your normal travel insurance. Yeah. Yes, that's true. So but, the other, but, the, but the other point, which I didn't get a chance to chance to make, is that you won't get any advertising. No. But I was gagging to say that, so I said it. <laughs> She says he's just sat there. And I had a really horrible. No, no, I agree with you. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, well, well, what we yes, what we what we what we planned was that um, we would just sort of stop and be off and do do sort of like and ask a few questions, and then we'd we'd say again, we'd you know, sort of really engaging. Really really that's fine, ask it. But what we'll do is we'll do the real question answer after the break. We'll break the break. 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 Break.
develops. I mean, could, Nick would say, uh, I quite like to get back to my original um, proposal that you know, if, if these guys have the money and all the rest of it, there must be some way of being able to work this out. At the moment, what we've got is uh, with somebody plug in, plug in Orlando for God knows how much how much a day is somewhere they don't like, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, that is quite. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, no, that, 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 that's decidedly tacky. But we've got, for example, with the New York Times, you know, a clear statement: they will not touch any writer who has yeah, taken a freely in the. In the, in the yes. Yeah, but then the results not written but, by travel writers. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but, 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 but where I'm going with this is that you know, I wonder sometimes if we are being too kind of prescriptive about uh, the way we do it. Because as long as we're transparent, and this is why I've been saying for ages that um, it doesn't matter that the, you know, we, we, we're, we're having the um, uh, FDA and the states and the um, um, Competition and Markets Authority here and the uh, Advertising Standards Bureau here looking at everything we do on YouTube and, uh, and, and, and online. Um, the fact is that we, we need to be doing this now for our audience because we need to be building that one-on-one -on -one relationship with our readers. So we should be saying, when we are taking um, a, a paid trip, you know, I, um, I, I was. I, I, well, I, I write quite detailed things. I say. I say. I'm. 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 actually. I'm in Salisbury because I'm um, doing something with the uh, with Wiltshire Tourism. But this particular element of what I'm doing uh, has nothing to do with that, and I paid to get into the mm. Remo Museum or whatever. Think, it is. I think if you and do I, something I think that's nothing you've... to do with it, you start to clarify. Oh, right. well, well, that's well, that's what I'm getting. At. I no, I don't think that. I think I think if you're absolutely transparent all the way. If through. I write a piece, you know, I think I'd be. Right. I'm with you. I think it, yeah. I, I, mean, I had this whole discussion with Jane Knight the other day about a, about a piece which, you know, to be honest, absolutely stank of being a, uh, a you know, traditional um, uh, freebie. Um, it was one, one of her writers, and it was uh, went off. To, uh, she was on a, uh, an African tropical island, blah, 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 and there's nothing else on this island but this resort. Um, and uh, I was going, you know, yeah, and, it was, and there was no declaration, and we were going. Uh, several of us are having this conversation, so and she that? came back. It was, uh, um, no, I mean, which publication? What? It was the it was Jane Knight, who we were talking about. And she, and she said, she well, she came, well, she does, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're very good at it. Yeah. But what she said was, um, no, actually, this one, she went to stay with friends. Uh, and she asked me afterwards if she could write about it. Fair so, enough. absolutely fair enough. There's nothing else on this fucking island but this luxury resort. So, my, mm. I, I sense that her friends are at the owners or whatever. But I'm not going to. But I was saying, well, you know, it, it, but the, the, the perception is, and there was a Twitter conversation, several people talking about it. The perception is that um, you know, this is an undeclared uh, 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 hosted yeah. trip. Um, so, why don't you just say? Um, Mary was uh, was well, staying with friends, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but you see, I tried to start that at the end a few weeks ago, and I was mm -hmm. told no. Start what? To start the. Problem. I think it's coming. Yeah. I, think, I, think it's, I think it's coming. So um, I mean, it's, I think it, 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 it's, well, because um, I my Bologna thing, I paid for my flight. I paid for. I stayed there before and paid for it and really liked it and said I want to do the yeah. experience yeah. properly. And they said, oh, you can stay for two nights. In the end, I stayed for one night because the window mm. exploded. Um, <laughs> oh, God. So I paid for a hotel, but I don't know how really I'm going to. Because I want to say, I wrote Choose to Race about this because yeah. because I paid and it was great, yeah. and yeah. I don't want it to be lumped under if yeah. it wasn't. So, no, I was trying to do a whole yeah. thing about what we paid, what we were doing. I don't know how, what the law is like on this, but at the moment, e e EU law requires. I mean, and, and what is payment? And I what think, is expenses? I think the whole, and how's you know, that work? Yeah, story, the you have to go hashtag ad or something like that. Yeah, oh. or spawn. Um, the blogger, who, the blogger woman, where was she going? Dublin. That. Oh uh, yes. The free room. Yeah. I think after that. The four people, nights or something yeah, like that. People yeah, people are waking up. I think. And I mean, we've had comments. And someone, someone that I know wrote something about Romania, and I added a fact box because just to put a fact box, and then there were all these comments. Obviously, because she's female, and there was an identical piece in the observer didn't get the comment. But oh, little, is it not? It wasn't sad. It was little something scammed the holiday for free, did she? And I actually wanted to write a reply to that and say. She pays her flight, she pay for her hotel. I, Julia, as a fat boy, to show you how to get her like, But I do really enjoy it. This is the trouble, I think. Mm. You know, because the thing is, I think that you've realised that. Yeah, and now they're fed up. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And I think that the thing is, 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 the
Maybe well, we can navigate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, we have achieved quite amazing things for such a small inside. We're never going to be, you know, the type of people. Yeah, but no, that's all about. I hate the word You've talked about what's the reason? Yeah. But even then, it's not all about the On some of those things, such as the meeting group. We've been here for four years, we only stopped three years ago. Or, you know, the whole company. Um, and, I, and we have more in here. Why would we? We have more in here. You know, but nonetheless, we came on here good. And we have more in here. You know, so I think, I don't want to say we didn't do anything. But all we did was write about it. What about it? Yeah, I think there was three stories on my side. I'm Julia's uh, huge coach of horses turned into a pumpkin and mice at nine o'clock because you're going to have to get to, to Cambridge. So I'm going to get to Cambridge. Look, look, Alistair, this is Claire, this is Julia. Can't you tell us? So, well, I'm going to go, we've got, we got 25 minutes, so I really want to, to drag on to the benefit of everybody. Here. Um, yeah. Yes, thank you. I finally get a word in. Thank you, Alice. It's very good. But in fact, what I'm going to say is, ladies and gentlemen, that Alice and I have almost had our say. <laughs> well, you have. I don't think I've got many questions. But really important now that we basically turn the microphone over to you guys for the burning questions and you monopolise the rest of the time. Right, fire away. Can you ask um, uh, 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 Benita to read out? We've got a couple of questions there. A couple of questions from the States. Is that right, Benita? Uh, Belgium. Belgium. Okay, so she's asking uh, if anybody has any thoughts about the importance of journalists providing video content alongside copy in the future as we transition more and more to digital. Will it garner extra payment? Um, and also, she wanted to know about rates in general. Um, so, uh, when they say stagnant stagnant or decrease in reference to rates before, does it not result in a poorer quality of journalism was her question. Who wants to take that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not entirely sure it's my area, um, but I personally think that video is becoming very, very important. Um, we're doing much more video ourselves now, and it was an area that I had to almost force myself into because it wasn't something I felt entirely comfortable with. But um, I think, I guess you guys will probably be looking more towards um, a video as well, whether they're going to pay extra or not. I'm going to pass that over to you. Um, uh, and sorry, what's the other bit of the question? Uh, in terms of rates. 
Um, rates, I find a really interesting one, even though I don't really, um, you know, work as a freelancer in the, in the main. Um, I find it fascinating though because I am from a print background. I was managing editor of uh, magazines at RCI, um, now it's 10 years ago. Um, but I know for a fact that the rates that you know, I paid when I was commissioning writers back then haven't changed. And actually, they were decent enough rates at the time, and you know, compared to the rates that I know, some of the rates that I know that are being paid in the industry now, they're still not bad. But it's 10 years on, and we've dealt with a lot of inflation, and there is a lot as well um, within, you know, in, tra in the travel industry, um, or tra sorry, the travel um, press, there's a lot of de decreasing rates, and I don't know how travel writers are going to survive that. Frankly. I'm interested in hearing one of the, uh, again, you talk about this question about um, video and pictures from magazines. We, um, well, firstly, I don't think of myself as a print editor. Um, <clears throat> whilst the magazine, the, the newspaper, we have a commitment to printing, that's our core product, and we have um, a lot of readers who still buy that paper. As a travel editor, I love having that massive format um, in, in which to, to show our features. We are, as I said, we're the biggest, we're one of the um, top 10 biggest websites in the world, so our digital presence is not inconsiderable. Um, we have a great social presence as well, and increasingly actually video too. So um, in answer to the question, is video important, it is massively central to us going forward. Will we be commissioning writers to include video content, um, as per Sarah's quest uh, Emma's question? Um, it, it, I, I can't say we won't, but I don't necessarily think that unless we're looking at a small embed or something that's just on social, which we always ask writers to do that, as they, you know, to tweet if they're on a great story, um, which I don't think is, um, you know, massively unreasonable. If we're going to do video, we'll do it properly. So we'll send um, a videographer, we'll send a cameraman, or, or you know, depending on what the job entails, then you'll be much better um, place to tell me about that as being TV cameraman, but um, TV producer. So yes, video central. Um, who we ask to do that will depend on a case by case basis on what it's for, what quality we need, and um, what rate do we pay? Thirty five p a word. And you know, I you currently send out a, a video cameraman or producer. Um, <clears throat> have you done so? Yeah, we have. We've got three video in the last six months. I can only speak from May because that's since I've only been in post since May. We've launched three video series in that time. Um, one is a little place I know, and that's the UK based videos, and they're using influencers. Um, we very much wanted to target um, a younger audience of um, uh, foreign nationals, actually, because it was a, a growth area for us. And we sent <coughs> a camera team out around the UK to various different locations and, and made some really great video. We've also done a video called <coughs> Secret Cities. We've only done one so far, but the intention is to do more. That was also done with the actually the in-house Telegraph video team. And then we have uh, a third series, which is using 360 degree technology to do 360 reviews of hotels. Mm -hmm. And again, we sent out the, the Telegraph video team to do that. Well, and we're really lucky that we do it, do it with a Theta 360 and get a quality that I never get in a hotel room. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're lucky, yeah. So, Penny, the, the using influencers, you said for the first, um, mm -hmm. yeah, how, how's that work? It was a it was just a trial really. We had <coughs> picked up on the fact that we were on Snapchat, um, which many core telegraph readers don't even know exists. <laughs> but um, we seem to go down quite well, who knew? And um, so we have a much younger audience and we've been able to connect with them and So you're using influence, but you pay, you're paying influencers? Yes. Mm. Yes. And because we do pay. Um, that just seems to book the trend. I mean, from, from you know my personal experience, I've, I mean, it, it's great. It's great that, 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 that that's happening. But um, from from my experience, 
you know, initially you you pay for words. Yeah? Um, pictures might come from a photographer. Then you're paid for a words and pictures package, or words, and then you then the then the the writer is paid for their pictures, and then they're not paid for their pictures. They're paid for their pictures and words package, and no, and no more. And then you're asked to do pictures, uh, words, pictures, and a bit of video, by the way, and you don't get any more payment for that. So you have to become increasingly skilled, yet actually getting nothing for that. Um, so. Is that an accusation at us? Because we don't no, it's not. It's not an accusation. It's an observation. It's well, an observation we in, don't, in general. We, we say it would be great if you um, mm. have got some videos that you want to tweet. Mm. It's not. It's not a condition of a commission. And we have a picture editor, and we pay agency rates for our pictures in print um, and online. And if, if the writer has <coughs> got some great images, and they want to us, they want to give them to us to have a, a look at and use, mm. we will give them a great picture credit. Mm. And if they're good enough, perhaps pay. But it's never, well, I won't say never because I can't speak for um, previously, but it is not part of, we won't say to a writer, right, you're not having that commission then because you won't do any pictures, or your video was rubbish, so we're just not paying you. I mean, that just would never happen. I, I confound for that. You, the Telegraph has never asked me to do either of those things. That's um, we're the best one in the world. We want do, experts. Yeah, and we want experts. So, you know, yeah. we, we, we use writers. We don't use writers and then get them to take the role of photographer. Where you mentioned um, that you had influences on the on your video project though, mm. I mean, you, therefore what you're saying is that you would, it's not always by your in-house team, but you know, you don't always film video yourselves, I, I guess, or did you no, have they the were team the ones, filming them? They were the ones saying this is my favourite place and this is why, mm. not the ones doing the filming. Right, we oh, sent okay. the team to video them. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking at it from the perspective of, of a travel writer. There is potential opportunity there, you know, if, and maybe the Telegraph wouldn't commission it, but I don't know, maybe the Independent or Evening Standard would commission video, you know, or maybe any other titles out there, because I, like you say, video is a definite growth area. Um, and if the quality of what you were producing was good enough, then, you know, there's a chance for, you know, for more work. It, 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 if, I think it's if you are going to upskill, upskill with video. Mm -hmm. Can I can I just ask a question? Whether you would expect them to be editing that video, or for you, or to give you the raw video? Um, <clears throat> if we were going to accept a video by a writer, it would or by anyone, it would be the edited version. We're not going to sit and edit that in house. Okay. We, 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 we haven't upskilled. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think good enough is not good enough. Uh, if you want to use video, why not use good video rather than something that's just good enough? I mean, we're talking quality here. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand. I just said we don't use... We would send our own video expert video teams to do that. Yeah, I know, but uh, somebody said that oh. uh, something was good enough. I mean, it's good enough for Facebook, it's good enough for Twitter, it's good enough for the internet. It's not a quality consideration, is it? Or Facebook Live, you know, you wouldn't expect that to have be. Well, also, it's also what it is, isn't it? It's two minutes of, of something of an event. It's, a, you know, it's like a movie, a movie photograph. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't require a, a TV team to do that. If you're talking about making a five minute movie, yeah. you do. Yeah. I think we also need to appreciate as well now that. Um, Online content is, is very quickly consumed and people move on to the next thing. Yeah. You know, and when, as much as I value quality, and I'm sure we all do here, you know, we're not pr Hollywood producers, you know, and on, unless they, you're sending out your team, who probably are fantastic videographers, I'm sure they are, you know, it's not going to be that kind of quality, but there's still a market for it and there's still interest in that. Hi, um, what I'd like to ask, I know it perhaps is not particularly relevant to, um, to any of you, but I'm increasingly asked... I'll leave now. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, it is relevant in certain things, in that I'm increasingly asked when I pick something, they say, I, I do a lot of online, and actually I do some prints as well, and I'm increasingly told, 
fine, you can do it, but we're no longer paying. And what happens is, is that there are a lot of even print publications who, um, because people, everybody thinks they're now a travel writer, mm. that will take um, really not very professional, or sometimes it's not bad, but people aren't being paid anymore. And I want to know, um, from the ethical point of view, how are we all going to get over that? Because I think that is a very, very serious problem. And the second thing is that um, I've been on press trips with people who are bloggers. Um, and the girl went off, uh, she had a photographer with her, and she had all these beautiful snaps, because she was young and pretty, being taken pictures. And she has and a, a friend of mine I spoke to who was a uh, PR and said they're now finding that all these bloggers who have got enormous following are perhaps teena uh, teenagers or school children who so they can say I've got X thousand or even a million um, followers and we're all as travel writers competing with these and yet these people aren't actually are the target audience from the people who are buying. And, and I think that's a very, very serious, um, both of those aspects are very serious things, aspects for us as travel writers. And, and I think it's something that we need to discuss about what we do about it, because nobody is doing anything. I, I think, th th unfortunately, the um, in terms of publications that don't pay writers isn't just a travel writing issue, it's across the board. Like, um, so many of my peers and my friends who are writers are offered jobs and then expected to do it for free. And um, it, it's voting with your feet. You know, yeah. if you, if you, the only people who can change that are writers, and it sounds desperately unfair, but if people continue to do it, people will continue expect it to, to expect it to happen. And, you know, we do pay our writers. Um, I've always paid writers in every job I've had. Um, I wouldn't take up a position where I was expecting people to do things for free and um, I can't comment any further than that really I, you know it's it's it, it, I can't see another solution can anyone else I think you're absolutely mm -hmm. right you know the more people that work for free the less decent paid work there is going to be it's simple okay, <laughs> may I just say on that I as a member of the guild decided I'm only going to write for people who pay me <coughs> And I have seen my colleagues getting all these fantastic trips, which I know they're not being paid for, um, and going away. And I'm sort of sitting at home, not getting these fantastic trips because the other people are. And so at what point do you say, well, I don't care. I'm going to get do it for free so that I can go on the trips. Otherwise, I'm not working and I'm not doing anything. I mean. But then they're not making money from those trips. You know, the trips are all very well. It's all well and good, but I mean, are, we, are you in business or are you there to go on, on holiday? You know? Yeah, what, sorry, did you say? It's completely right. It happens all the time. Yeah. But it's still an individual choice, you know. It's just as Sarah said, are you. Can I just say something about the guild? Because I reiterate about the individual choice. I have a friend who's actually a business journalist who occasionally does travel. And we both at the same time um, <coughs> offer from Hertz and I've got a print commission and I think she does regular things for Forbes. I mean she can get amazing trips because she's a regular columnist. And she got basically the same offer as me, which was for about six nights of car rental, will you please have social media every day? You need to provide a 500 word blog. We need a mention in each fact file and a mention in, in each article. I said, but I'm only going to Massachusetts. It's not a road trip, it doesn't matter. And I, and I, I said no, and she always criticized me. She says, oh, you came in too easily. And she said yes. And I was like, well, what's going on here? You know, but the, it is, you're right, it's a personal choice. And I said, I'm, grew up out there and I know six nights of car rental is about $150. So they thought all of those things were worth $150 and I said, I'm sorry. It's and that's it, in the end it's about valuing yourself and well, your exactly. output as well, isn't it? You and know, you know, and you know, and you yourself and you say, that, excuse me, I value mm -hmm. myself and I value yeah. my home because there were loads of other people 
And from my perspective, Natasha, you did the right thing as well, you know, because I would have been sat at home as well. <laughs> yeah. I think there is already a guild policy that don't work for free. No? We've got a lady here with a question. With the microphone, she has hey, the power. I've got a mic. <laughs> I'd just like to ask each of our panellists tonight, what would be your definition of ethical travel writing? In one sentence, thank you. <coughs> one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I... Right. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, writing about something I believe in. Sarah? Um, it's really interesting, actually, because we had this discussion just before this whole thing, and I think eth ethical travel writing is different for everybody. I don't think it's straightforward, and it's, it, there are, you know, in the end, it's about doing what you think is the right thing, you know, and that, yeah, that's down to the individual. Julia? I think for me it's telling a story that needs to be told. And I think it's that simple and working out how to do it. And I think most of the stuff that most of the stuff that I get pitched is not stuff that needs to be told. I'm not <laughs> looking for that. Um, yeah. Really good. I think I take the ethical out of that and I'd say travel writing should be expert and authentic and um, and therefore it will be ethical. <coughs> With writing about travel so often isn't, as we've demonstrated in this talk, that there are lots of people out there who are writing about travel, which doesn't necessarily mean it's any of those things, expert or authentic, or therefore ethical. One, two more questions. As, as a journalist who has been across many spectrums, can I ask, what is the purpose of travel writing? Um, <laughs> Where are we starting? You go for it. Go for it. It appears so, yeah. Um, well, the purpose of the travel writing we produce is to um, to entertain, to inform, to um, inspire, and to um, and to give readers inspiration and and also um, permission to dream. For me, it's just the same as my last question: telling a story that needs to be told. And I think. For me, what I've done at the Independent, and I'm hoping that we're going to move that way a little bit with the standard, is doing more features that happen to be based in a place, rather than a piece about a trip, for example. I think it's more about the people. I travel because I want to get to know different cultures and different people and find out stuff about them and about myself through them. I don't care about a fancy hotel or a new bar or something, and I think it's the people that's at the heart of it, and that's why we do it. I think um, the question also should be, though, what's the, what's the purpose of travel? And when we've identified why people travel, no, but when we've identified why people travel, we can identify why we're writing about travel. You know, and for me, it's about sharing a world view and in, informing people about something that they're not, they may not have been aware of before, um, and about different cultures and you know that that whole mix of stuff that really gets us excited. And if we're not excited about it, there's no point in writing about it, is there? I don't think we do it. I would say probably twofold: to inform and to tell a story. <coughs> And maybe there's an element of cultural exchange in there. There's probably some travel writing, travel journalism. You know, that means different things to different people. Um, possibly a politically aware <coughs> subcurrent. Uh, not that, that you know, you see the light of day very often, but um, yeah, to inform and to tell a story. And I'll probably echo what Julia said: a story that needs to be told. And we got one more, one more question. I just before we all commit suicide and get terribly gloomy about the whole thing. I, I just thought you made a very interesting point right at the beginning about having a, a sophisticated audience. And I 
would like to say that I think we're talking very much about the British perspective on the whole evening. <coughs> and actually, you mentioned the, about the power of the website. And what we find is so thrilling is the fact that we are so lucky to have the English language and that we are writing for people all around the world. And although our SATW people are watching, we have so many chums across America who will come to a UK publication to get that informed uh, opinion of that little Daily strong Mail website. Sorry? Yeah. The Daily Mail website, very popular uh, in the US. It, it, it could be, I haven't had the privilege. But, um, actually, on the Telegraph <laughs> one, it would be the, uh, the, uh, the little restaurant or the, the place in, 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 in the, the Sinai Walk, you know, blowing their minds away because that would never have been written about in the USA. Uh, fact of life. And I just think, don't think so, okay, right. Uh, <laughs> but the, I just think that we, although, Although we're being a bit, a bit gloomy, we, 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 we are incredibly lucky to, to actually have the English language to get us out around the world in a way that most people love. I think we've... Um, fair comment. I think... Uh, yes, fair comment. I, I, I think we've um, to only touched on the, uh, the very tip of an iceberg here. It's clear that there are fundamental changes uh, at work in our industry, and uh, it, it is going to become... Um, probably more difficult before it gets better. But the great thing is that actually it's us who de determine how this works, and that's never been more true uh, in, the, in the blogger circuits, and it, it holds true also in traditional media circuits. Um, this is new territory, and it's down to us to explore it and to make it work in the way that suits our audience uh, and, and pays us at the same time. I'm conscious that we haven't had many questions in from the, uh, from the web. We've tried to take a couple. I did get a question from an anonymous, um, which was asking about the justification for ethical journalism. And I'd like to say to you now, uh, I, I didn't actually ask it because we kind of covered that, that, that territory. I was looking at it and going, oh, we just said that. So uh, I, I'm hoping that's going to be OK, Mrs. Anonymous. Um, this is a subject, as I say, I think is going to run and run. And for that reason, I would invite you and I would invite you guys over at uh, uh, the Society of American Travel Writers and anybody else watching um, to use this hashtag, F-O-E-T-W, um, to, to, to have that debate if you want to uh, on Twitter. And for us, we can have it outside there where we have stacks more booze, thanks to Stay City. And I'd also like to mention also our, our, our venue hosts. Um, Smith and Walensky, who've been absolutely fabulous this evening and provided some fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. food. <laughs> Jason, Jason tells me that he is keeping a firm eye on all those bottles out there uh, in readiness for our, for our departure. Um, some of us, I know, have to, to, to move quickly, so uh, I think we should call it uh, a day there. But like I say, if you can, then do um, use that hashtag and start a discussion on uh, Twitter or on Facebook or wherever you like. Yeah, Thank you very much, Alison. I'd just like to say, could I ask you to put your hands together for our wonderful panellists. Thank you very much for stepping into the fire and Claire, Julia, Sarah and Nick. And thank you very much, folks.